I miss you guys. Uh, I hope you got to see my last video about roly polies. If you missed it, look at Principal Friedman's YouTube page and you can find it there. Today we're going to talk about falling. It's probably something you have a lot of experience with. Ah! And so, first I want to show you a clip of two things falling on the moon. This is in 1971 when NASA sent Apollo 15 to the moon. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather. In my right hand a hammer. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Now at the same time. How is that possible? Now, just to make sure the physics didn't change on us, let's try this experiment on Earth and see how it works. Got our hammer and our feather. Three, two, one. Okay, so that feather flew a lot slower than the hammer. And let's see if we can figure out why. There must be something different between the moon and the Earth. Hmm, well, just looking at them, there's a lot of things that are different. But only a few of those affect falling objects. Gravity and air. The moon has much lower gravity than Earth, which is why you might have noticed the objects fell slower on the moon. But it also doesn't have any air. And air, even though we can't see it, pushes against things that fall. And that's what allows parachutes to work here on the Earth. A parachute wouldn't work that well on the moon because there's hardly any air to push back on it. This also means that parachutes like this one that they're making for the Mars rover don't work as well on Mars as they would on Earth. The air on Earth is really thick and dense compared to air on the moon or Mars. Even though it's invisible, you've probably felt it when you run really fast or when you ride your bike or a scooter and you feel the air on your face. Yes, that's Earth's atmosphere pushing on you. So now we get to our steam challenge. I want you to find a toy or something around your house that you can drop. We're going to make a parachute for that toy to try and slow down its fall. I'll show you two different ideas. You don't have to use my ideas. Yours might be even better. So give them a try and find out. The parachute that I'm going to show you is just a plastic bag. I'm going to take this Lego guy and I'm going to hook the plastic bag's handles under her arms. Man, this would be uncomfortable if you're a real person to have a plastic bag under your armpits. I think she won't mind though. Okay, so you just have a plastic bag under her arms like that and super easy parachute number one. Our second parachute, we're going to make it out of a napkin. It's a little more complicated but not that much harder and I think it will work a lot better. But we will find out. So we take our napkin. This one's paper. You could use cloth or a bandana or a small square of fabric. And I'm going to tie a little bit of string on the corner. We're just going to use a square knot. So what a square knot is, is right over left, just like you're tying your shoes when you start out. Then instead of making the bows for tying your shoes, you just do another knot. The same thing that you did, but starting with the other side, left over right. Okay? And then I'm going to pull that to the middle. I'm going to cut them all right at the middle so that they'll all be the same size. And we're going to do that for each corner. And if you have a little extra string here, you can just chop off the end. If you don't have string, you could use rope or mm, fishing line or even dental floss, I think, would work. Thread might be good because it's very lightweight. You use what you have. Maybe masking tape would work. I don't, you might just have to try it and find out. And one more card. Okay, now we have all these strings, and we want to put all the strings together. If your toy has a loop, like mine does, you can put all the strings through the loop. If, if it doesn't have a loop, you can make the knot first, and then just tuck in its arms or legs or whatever. We're going to make an overhand knot, which basically just means we make a loop. See, here's our loop. We're making all the strings into one big loop, and then we push all the strings through the loop. Push the ends through. Okay, then we can pull it like that, and we have another parachute. Sapphire here, ready to help me test out the first parachute. We've got a Lego guy in one hand, and a Lego guy with a parachute in the other hand. So let's make sure the Lego guys are level with each other, and we'll drop it in three, two, one. Oh, that parachute actually worked pretty good. 
Okay, next to me, we've got these two little froggies. And remember, if the parachute falls slower, that's because the air is pushing back on the parachute. Three, two, one. Okay, the parachute flew much slower. What do you think might make a better parachute? Hmm, we could try different materials for the strings or for the chute part. Maybe we could attach it differently. And maybe you want to try dropping some different toys with the parachute and see how they are different. If you like parachutes, there's a lot of cool books on Epic about parachutes and skydiving and things like that. And uh, if you try this experiment, I would love to see your parachutes. You can email them to me at andrea at icecavern.net. Stay safe, have fun, and keep building. Three, two, one. They both wanted to go down the slide. <laughs>